What is competition? Uh, exactly. The magical way of pushing down prices while raising happiness? Or instead, a war of every man against every man to the benefit of a mere few? In three minutes, all will be revealed. Well, almost. Let's take a minuscule market by way of example. There are companies that make and sell the same product, which we'll call uh, zippies, and customers who buy them. Economists use the term perfect competition for a situation where all competing companies are subject to the same conditions. On one side, there's the customers, and on the other, the uh, zippies. Customers monitor prices and naturally choose the lowest. This means that companies selling at higher prices end up not selling at all. The result is that each company squeezes its margins and costs as much as possible. The price of zippies, determined by the interaction between numerous sellers and buyers, establishes itself close to the lowest possible level, taking account of manufacturing costs. Customers purchase their zippies at the best price and they are happy. The opposite of perfect competition is a monopoly, whereby there's only one manufacturer of zippies. It can raise its prices as much as it likes, since the captive customers have no choice other than giving up their zippies altogether. And that's tough. Between perfect competition and a monopoly, there is an oligopoly, whereby two or three sellers, for example, share the market between them. There is competition in theory, but in practice the risk of price-fixing cartels is significantly higher. Consumers pay too much for their zippies. They are unhappy. That's why, in most countries, the law forbids monopolies and oligopolies or subjects them to tight regulations. In the real world, examples of perfect competition are few and far between. The price of apricots on markets in the Roussillon region generally follows this model, but that's not the case for most of the others. For there to be perfect competition, at least four conditions must be met. 1. Atomicity this means that there are enough sufficiently independent producers to avoid any price agreement. 2. Free entry. New producers must be able to enter the market. If this is impossible or very complicated, then competition is no longer perfect. 3. Uniformity of the product. If there are lots of models of varying quality, then it can't work. The zippies must be exactly the same for competition to be perfect. On the wine market, for instance, each product is different or even unique. So much so that it's hard to compare prices and a high price can even become a selling point on the basis that if it's expensive, then it must be good. 4. Transparency. Buyers must be informed of the prices and quality of products, otherwise competition stops working. Distance, for instance, can give rise to local monopolies. It's not easy comparing prices if the next seller is a two-day journey away. So, perfect competition is not always possible, but is it even desirable? Not so sure. The unit cost of certain products falls when production rises. This is what is known as an economy of scale. A factory producing a thousand cars is more likely to be profitable than one producing ten. The result is that the biggest producers tend to be the cheapest. Paradoxically, a reduction in the number of producers, and therefore less competition, can drive prices down, contrary to the model. This is what justifies the existence of public services in certain countries to operate water or electricity networks, for instance. It's hard to imagine several companies sharing the management of a high-voltage line between them. And then there are also products that are specific because they are new. This is true for drugs and software, as well as novels or songs. These specific products require a considerable initial investment in terms of money or time. If everyone can reproduce and sell them, then it no longer makes economic sense to create them. This is why the law, once again, invented intellectual property. Patents and copyrights restrict competition by giving the inventor of a drug or the composer of a song a temporary monopoly. The consumer pays more, which isn't great, but without a patent or a copyright, the product probably wouldn't even exist. In short, 
Competition is not an absolute good, but with a minimum amount of rules, it remains a fundamental aspect of our market economies, which prevents abuse related to monopolies while fostering innovation. In other words, it makes it possible to obtain the latest uh, zippies at a reasonable price.